So moving on now, we're going to look at the data structures in Redis, hashes, lists, sets, and then our set operators, which uh, we you know, should be kind of familiar with from some of our relational database work. So hashes basically just allow us to write multiple fields and values to a single key. Okay, and this is kind of like in uh, in something like MongoDB, where we have a uh, an attribute that is of a data type object that allows us to write uh, a JSON object that can have multiple values and, and attributes itself into a single attribute. So, uh, with a hash, we have a key, and then within that key, we can have any number of subkeys or a uh, uh, or uh, or values or sorry subkeys or fields that have their own values. So if you think about kind of what your use case here might look like, is we would have a a hash key for each user, and then as part of that user we have fields like first name, last name, and email address or phone or something like that, and this naming convention that I'm demonstrating here, where we have a colon, there's nothing magic about this colon. And, and you'll see in the upcoming examples in DynamoDB, we have a similar naming convention and I use a pound sign or a hash uh, as part of that naming convention. In, in neither case, is there anything really magical about this character? It's just something that we're using to kind of, uh, kind of uh, delimit this, uh, this key. Okay, so we're creating a hash key for this user that has these fields of first name, last name, and email, and phone, and these values uh, for that. So I um, actually am going to switch back to, to this for just a moment to kind of uh, run through these examples, and then we'll be back in the presentation in just a moment. So uh, we're going to hm set so this is hash multiple set because we're writing into a hash key and we're writing multiple values into this hash key so the key is user j smith and then within the hash user j smith we have a field of first name and a value for jill a field of last name and a value of smith and a field of email and a value of j smith at example.com so when we do this, now if we look at keys, we see we only have one key, this user J Smith. And if we were to try to just use our get operation to get the value of that, we're gonna find that Redis tells us uh, you can't just get user J Smith because user J Smith is a hash key, not just a regular key. So in order to um, get any values out of this hash key, we have to use the command hget, right? So we're going to hget user j smith, and then we have to tell uh, Redis what field we want. And in this case, maybe we want email address. And so we're able to get that out of our hash item, okay? Uh, if we wanted to see what all keys we have in this hash, we can say, uh, H keys, and then uh, and this tells us that as part of this uh, user J Smith object or, or hash, we have these fields F name, L name, and email address that we can query. Okay, and so in the slides at the at the very top, you see in parentheses I have uh, help at hash. Okay, and this is where I'm talking about Redis's built-in documentation being really useful because if we just type help and hit tab, it, it starts walking us through everything that Redis can give us help on. And if we just say help at hash, this tells us all of the hash relevant commands, right? So uh, the one that we uh, just did H get H keys. If we do a H len, uh, that tells us how many 
uh, how many fields there are that are part of this hash element. So three in this case, uh, if we say H vowels of user J Smith, this gives us all of the values, but not all of the uh, names of the fields that go along with that. But if we say H get all, it tells us both the field and the value that goes along with that field. And it's not in a very pretty format, right? But pretty isn't what Redis does. Very fast is what Redis does. So um, anytime you are, because we're not going through all 260 possible commands, but we are gonna go through some of the big stuff in hashes and lists and, and sets. But for all of this, if you just do uh, help and then, you know, when we start talking about lists, help at list, and here's all of the commands that are relevant to uh, interacting with lists, which is a pretty, pretty useful thing. So, um, yeah, we can set, let's say, set another, uh, another hash item. This for user M Grimes, F name is Mark, L name is Grimes, phone is, is this, right? Um, we can also set, instead of uh, setting multiple fields at once, we can set just a single field by using H set instead of HM set. And note that since this is, even though this hash uh, object currently exists, since we are writing to a field that does not currently exist, this isn't going to overwrite this entire object, like we had previously seen uh, when we did a set on top of it, an existing key, this is going to append uh, to this um, to this uh, existing existing object. So if I say h get all user m Grimes, you see that we have f name, l name, phone, and city. The thing that I just uh, most recently added. So hashes can be a very useful data structure because we can put multiple things into one item. So the second data structure we're going to talk about are lists. And lists are ordered sets of values. And since they are ordered sets of values, uh, we can access a list as either a stack or a queue. And uh, if you've taken computer science classes and programming classes in the past, you uh, may be familiar with the, uh, the general data structure of a list and uh, using them as stacks or queues. Uh, stacks being last in, first out, and queues being first in, first out. And we don't have to define how we want to use our list ahead of time. Uh, whether it's used as a stack or a queue is just going to depend on the, uh, the order uh, or the side, whether we're pushing and popping items off of, this, uh, off of this list from the right or the left, okay? So with a list, you push items onto it and you pop items off of it, okay? And so the general way that this works, there we go, is uh, we're going to push, say item one, item two, item three, item four. And then when we access this as a stack, we're going to pop the item off the top. Okay, so we would pop off the most recent thing that we put in, in this case four, and then three, and then two, and then if we add something else, it's going to go on top of the stack. So then five is pushed onto the stack and six is pushed onto the stack. And then we would pop six off and pop five off and pop four off. So it's a last in, first out situation. Whereas a queue works kind of in the other direction where let's push an item into the list. So one, two, three, four. And then when we start popping items off of the list, we're going to pop the first thing that we added, in this case, one, two, three, and or one and two. And then as we add or push new items onto the list, we're going to push them to the front of the queue, so five and six. And then as we pop items off, it's going to be the oldest items. So not a right or wrong way 
to do things, but it's just two different ways we manage the items that are in our list, right? Whether we treat it as a stack or a queue. So we add items to our list using the R push or L push commands, depending on if we want to push them to the right side or the left side of the list. And then we'll pop them off using R pop and L pop, depending on if we want to pop them off of the left side or the right side of the list. So I think this will yeah, be most easily illustrated by flipping back to our Redis server and actually creating these lists. So we're going to start by pushing onto this list, which we're calling students, this value of Alicia. Okay, so let's push Alicia. Let's push Bob. Chris. And notice every time Redis is now telling us how many items are in this list. Okay. Okay, so we now have four items in our list. And if we want to see the items that are in the list without uh, popping any of them off, we use this command L range. And oddly enough, there is not an R range. There's only the L range or left range. And uh, we specify what position we want to start at and what position we want to end at. Okay, so uh, again, Redis, like most computers, uh, starts counting at zero. So let's start at position zero and let's stop at position negative one, which is going to tell Redis that we want to um, go all the way to the end of the list because otherwise negative one is an invalid option. And what I forgot was to provide the name of the key, which in this case is students. Uh, so L range of students starting at position zero and going to negative one or doing the whole thing. And so here is the current contents of our list, Alicia, Bob, Chris, and David. If I said start at zero and stop at two, we're gonna get Alicia, Bob, and Chris. And keep in mind, since we start at zero, this is zero, one, two, right? Even though we have three, three things here. All right, so since we pushed these items into the list from the right, if we want to treat this list as a stack, if we do an R pop, that is going to take the, uh, the last item that we added and return that, in this case, David. It's going to pop David off the top of the stack, right? So our pop students gives us David. And then if we do that again, we get Chris. If we do it again, we get Bob. If we do it again, we get Alicia. Okay, so this is treating our list as a stack, okay? On the other hand, if we push into this student's list from the right, again, Alicia, Bob, Chris, and David, same thing, but this time, instead of R pop, let's L pop. Okay, so now this is going to uh, treat our list as a queue. So we're gonna get Alicia, Bob, Chris, and David. We're just moving in the other, other direction this time, okay? So again, not a right or wrong answer, uh, just depending on do you want what's returned out of this list to be the most recent thing that was put in the list or the oldest thing that was put in the list? And that's all just going to depend on the uh, business application that you are working with. And now our final, and, and whether it's a, a, a stack or a queue just depends on if you match your are, are your match the direction that you're pushing and popping or if you do the opposite, right? So if you push from the right and then pop from the right, then it's going to be a stack. If you push from the right and pop from the left, it's going to be a queue, right? And if you push from the left and pop from the right, it's going to be a queue, just moving in the other direction. So something to, something to kind of play around with. But the last data structure that we are going to talk about 
are sets, right? And of course, relational databases are based in set theory. So this is, uh, we can do some of the same type of operations that we can do with a relational database. And if we just type help at set, this tells us all of the commands that we can use uh, with our set data constructs. But what we're going to do in this example is to create a set that represents the students enrolled in BZAN 6354 and BZAN 6356. So to create our first set, I'm gonna say S add for set add, and then, well, what's the key? The key I'm gonna say is course, uh, BZAN, oops, course, BZAN 6356. And again, I have the colon here as part of the naming convention, but that's nothing uh, magical about it being a set. It's just that I'm gonna have two courses and I wanna kind of be able to see at a glance that uh, that's what I have stored in both of these objects. Uh, so for my BZAN 6356 set, I'm gonna say we have Adam, Beth, Chris, Dan, and Edna. Okay, so we have a set that has five objects in it. I can look at the set by saying S members 6356. And there are the set, the members of this set. And notice that uh, these are not in the order I specified them in. Um, in fact, I, I cannot tell what order these are in at all. And that really doesn't matter because by the very definition of being a set, sets are unordered, right? There is no uh, order to a set. And actually, I don't even know if Redis may return these in a different order eventually after we do other stuff. I don't know. But uh, sets are unordered collections of objects, which is what we see here. So I'm going to create uh, one more set for the Bizan 6354. And we're going to say in this set, we have Adam, Chris, and Frank. And so I would point out that in these two sets, we do have some overlap. Uh, Adam and Chris are in both Bizan 6354 and Bizan 6356. Uh, but we have some additional students in 56 and some additional students in, in 54. So, of course, we can use the S members command to uh, see the contents of this other set. But then we can also use some of our set theory operators that we uh, should be familiar with from our relational database work, like uh, the union of two sets. So we can, or two or more sets. So we can say S union uh, course BZAN 6354, course, gotta spell it right, BZAN 6356. And so the union is going to give us uh, everything that is in either set. So the combination of the two sets without duplicating uh, any items that are in both sets, right? So even though Adam is in both classes, we only see Adam listed once. Okay, so that's the union of these two sets. And we could have the union of many more than, than two sets. We could keep going. Uh, if we do S, I think intersect, no, S, Enter, S-I-N-T-E-R, and then however many sets we want to find the intersection of, uh, we see that Chris and Adam are the only two uh, objects that are in both sets. We can also look at the difference. So S-Diff, this is going to tell us the people that are in 6354, but not 6356, which in this case is just Frank. And we can get the difference in the other direction. So subtracting 6354 from 6356, and we see that Beth, Edna, and Dan are enrolled in 6356, but not 6354. And then the final kind of cool thing we can do uh, with a regular set is to store the output of this set operation um, 
in a new set. So in order to do that, let's uh, let's store the intersection. So let's say s enter store and then the destination. So I'm going to call this uh, both these in uh, the intersection of course Bzan 6354 and course Bzan 6356. So we already saw that the intersection was Chris and Adam, and now we're going to store that set that represents the interaction of these two sets in this set called both Bzan. And if we say S members of both Bzan, we can see that's a set that includes these two uh, objects of Chris and Adam. And of course, to interact with the set, we have to use these set specific commands. If I were to just set, say like something like get both Bs and, uh, Redis says, no, you can't do that because that's not the data type that I expect it to be. Now, our final thing we're talking about with Redis is uh, we have this idea of lists being ordered and sets being unordered. However, we can also have sets that are sorted. Okay, and so we can apply an additional value uh, to a set uh, in order to have an ordered set. Oh wait, one, one thing I will show you about this set before we, uh, before we move on to the ordered set is how we can get data out of it, okay? So in addition to just looking at those values, if we had a set and we wanted to randomly pull values out of it, right? So imagine, uh, uh, you know, we have our, our list of customers or a list of students in our course and we want to randomly select a single student, but once they've been selected, we want to make sure we can't select them again. Uh, whereas we used the uh, rpop or lpop command to pop objects off of either end of a list, we can use spop to randomly pop an item out of our uh, out of our set. Okay, so if we were to spop course bzan 6356, this is going to give us uh, a random a random member from that set and and note that Edna is no longer in that set because we've popped her out of there. So now we randomly get Chris and you can see Chris has gone from the set. And then once we're out of members of the set, you know, we see nothing else there. Now let's move on to our ordered sets. And then when we get done with this, we'll take a, uh, a quick break and then uh, reconvene to discuss DynamoDB a little bit. So let's, uh, now that we have Popped everyone out of Bzan 6356. Actually, let's uh, let's do the same for 54. Let's just clear this out. Do we have anything left in our database? Let's just start over from scratch. How about that? All right. So our, our Redis database is empty now. We're going to now recreate a set for 6356, but we're going to create this as a sorted set. And a sorted set, instead of s add, we use z add to tell uh, Redis that this is a sorted set, not just a regular set. And we're going to call this course bzan 6356. And the values that we want to provide are the grade and the name of the student. So in this case, let's say. Uh, 82 is the grade, or more generically speaking, Redis refers to this as a score, but it could kind of represent whatever. So let's say Adam has an 82. We have a score of 95 for, uh, for Beth. Let's say a 91 for Chris, a 60 for Dan, 
and 85 for old Edna. Okay, so this is going to create a sorted set of these five uh, members of the set that have this value for score. Okay, so in order to see these members of the sorted set, we're going to say Z range, of course, these and 6356, and we're going to start at element zero, and we're going to go all the way to the end. Whoops, 60, my fingers got off on the wrong key, 6356. So here are the members of this set, but currently we're not seeing the scores. So optionally, we can say with scores at the end of this, and now we see in our sorted set, Dan has a score of 60, Adam is 82, and is 85, Chris is 91, and Beth is 95. So we're ordered by this score that we've applied for each member of the set. And this gives us the ability to also provide now a range of scores that we're interested in seeing. So we can, uh, instead of just Z range, we say Z range by score. And then here's the set that we're interacting with. And let's say we want to see everyone who has a B in the class. So scores ranging from 80 to 89. And this is going to give us just Adam and Edna, right? Or we could look for people that are you know, between 90 and 100 or 200 even. And that gives us Chris and Beth, okay? So just a little bit more sophisticated of a, of a data structure. And if you think about um, this rapid processing of data that is really uh, what Redis is designed to do. You know, think about if you had a sensor that's giving you, you know, a hundred temperature readings every second, right? Because you've got something that can fluctuate in temperature very quickly. Maybe what you're having Redis do is pump all of those temperature readings into a sorted set like this, but then you only want to return any values that exceed some threshold, like any values that are above, you know, 500 degrees or something like that. And that's the point at which you want Redis to start spewing out all of the data that's coming from this sensor, right? So we can do this kind of streaming processing of our data and throw away everything we're not interested in and process all the things that we are interested in, right? So that's the type of application that we might might see uh, for this type of thing. So lots of uh, lots of fun and exciting stuff that we can do with uh, with Redis. So a uh, lot of very useful commands. Again, generally not for long term storage, not for persistent storage, not for doing any heavy analytics like we might find ourselves doing with a relational database management system. But this is a very robust way to be able to move data around very quickly and, uh, and process data very quickly.